I do want to ask you, Siraj. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think that this time is different than times in the past? That's what I've been asked a lot is what makes this situation different? What makes these gatherings and protests different than ones we've seen previously? Or, or are they not different? That's a good question because I don't, it's, it's hard to look at anything in a vacuum nowadays. And if we look at protests that have happened in the past, um, I mean, the only thing that really comes close to sort of social unrest in the last decade is what happened in Ferguson, Missouri, after Michael Brown was shot by Darren Wilson, um, the, the police officer who was then basically not, um, not tried or not charged by a grand jury. Um, and that seemed rather localized. That seemed localized to just Ferguson at the time. This is on a nationwide level. I think there's, it's a very unique time. I, I also think that there's um, an extra added push because we're in an election year and um, people around the country are more energized than ever to get politically active. And um, this is a, a, a time in which, uh, you know, social media has just lent itself to go above and beyond in allowing people to engage in the political process, allowing their voices to be heard, and allowing people to organize in effective ways where you have protests, organized protests around the country, all happening pretty much on the same day on, uh, or on you know, consecutive days. And I, I mean, we'll look back on this as probably a moment with it might be a watershed moment, how our politicians and, and public officials and leaders respond to it will be the, the, the real tale. Because as we're talking about defunding the police, you're hearing about certain politicians, namely uh, President Trump and Joe Biden saying, no, don't defund the police. Um, both have different approaches on how they want to address police brutality. Um, and, but ultimately, neither uh, Republicans or Democrats, at least the establishment, aren't going to give, they're not going to give in to at least the Black Lives Matter organization's demands of completely defunding the police. However, you have like Minneapolis, which <laughs> where the George Floyd killing happened um, by Derek Chauvin, the police officer who's now tried with his murder. Um, Minneapolis, their city council d d voted to dismantle the Min Minneapolis Police Department. I'm not 100% sure what that means and what that will, uh, what precedent that sets going forward. Um, I imagine it has less to do with dismantling, I'm sorry, it has less to do with defunding and more so um, breaking down and rebuilding it back up, um, as you were saying before. You break it down, build it back up in a way that's, um, that hopefully has more, um, you know, restrictions on uh, the level of impunity of police officers. They can't just, you know, act and not be held accountable uh, for their actions. I hope that's I, I hope that's what their goal is because ultimately there are a lot of people who get involved in sort of the reform process and they have an agenda in mind that doesn't necessarily address what the desired goal is and they sort of take matters into their own hands and that's when sort of power begins to corrupt. So we'll see. I, ha I think it's too early for, for us to tell how Minneapolis is going to go down, but certainly nationwide, you ha I say like in New York, you got Bill de Blasio uh, saying that he's going to be uh, cutting some funding to the NYPD uh, and uh, the NYPD doesn't seem to be liking that that much. Um, I'm hearing that the NYPD is uh, pretty much overfunded. Uh, I have not seen actual numbers. And I, I mean, I'm sure there is over policing in a lot of communities in New York. Um, and I mean, every time I go to New York, there's police like on every corner. And I guess maybe it should make you feel safe. But again, like, I'm not I, I 
if you look at me, if you look at me, I am not someone who police would profile immediately based on skin color or skin tone. Right. Uh, you know, and I, and I think that's absolutely correct in terms of make who feel safe. It certainly doesn't make me feel safe. It probably, right. you know, in a city uh, that got hit by 9-11, it probably doesn't make your dad feel safe. You know, um, so depending. Probably. Yeah, it depends on it for sure. But, you know, uh, I think that, you know, the, the NYPD with their history um, and defunding them again, this is, it's funny because to me, that whole situation, because I think Bill de Blasio finally came to his senses and realizes the NYPD hates Bill de Blasio regardless. So right. you always try to like kiss up to them and be like, I'm going to support the police. And they turn their back on him anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well support the community that you were you know, that really got you elected. In, in many ways, those were African Americans and Latinos that supported Bill de Blasio and supported him throughout his career as mayor of New York City uh, and saw him as, an, as, you know, somewhat of an ally. And he's turned his back on several occasions on them trying to please the police. And the police, mm -hmm. over and over again in New York City, have rejected Bill de Blasio. So finally, he's finally come to his senses. He's finally gotten what I say is some balls in his draws. And he said, all right, you know, we're going to defund the police. They are uh, abusing, not only are they abusing citizens and, and non-citizens and members of our community that make New York great, but also they're abusing my particular political constituents, the people that actually support me. And so I think Bill de Blasio has come to his senses uh, it, when it comes to the, the NYPD. And let's be for real, we can go back to Amadou Diallo. We can go way back before then, uh, mm -hmm. certain cases with the NYPD. And we can certainly remember uh, on Staten Island, another man uh, who said those words, I can't breathe. And guess Eric what? Garner. You know, Eric Garner. So, you know, and guess what? Like the NYPD has done nothing to reform itself. You have the, the police unions who basically run the NYPD, who are, who are basically racist organizations. And I'll say it right here and right now, when they're saying they're a wartime uh, police department, you know, uh, who abuse people of color, sometimes use people of color to abuse other people of color, you know, because the NYPD is diverse. So this mm -hmm. is why this idea of, you know, you hear a lot of people in conservative media saying, we need more, more black and brown officers. That's going to fix it. No, it's not. Hmm. It's a structural thing. It doesn't matter who's in, you know, in uh, power in order to actually, you know, uh, be at the controls of, of, a, of a machine that is meant to harm or in oftentimes, you know, inadvertently or directly harms a particular community. So, you know, I think, you know, de Blasio is finally coming to his senses. Uh, police can be overfunded, not only in New York, but I can tell you in Baltimore City, you had a lot of units uh, that were unnecessary, caused, you know, bad relationships with the, with the public. Uh, there was the gun trace tra task force. Uh, you had, uh, situations where police were abusing over time. There were, I think there was one case where guys were in Vegas and they were still on the clock in Baltimore. Mm. Like, yeah, yes. this kind of stuff. We got, we have to trim the fat. We have yeah. to, def I think defunding the police in some cases is correct, but that's also to rebuild the police. And the point is, when we rebuild the police, I'm a firm, firm believer that a lot of what we do in education actually fits better for policing. And when I say that, that is that bad police should be pushed out like we do with education reform. With education reform, we push bad teachers out. If you are not someone who is moving students forward, they push you out. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell you to find you, you get one year of probation and then you're out on your ear. If you're a good teacher, you get huge bonuses. Um, and you can make, you know, a six-figure salary as a K-12 teacher. 
think the same thing needs to happen to policing. Good police who treat people fairly and equitably and enforce the law uh, without brutalizing people, they need to be people who are rewarded with high salaries. And that's I think that's our, our money. I think um, when we're talking about police reforms, because this is something that um, when I'm hearing coming from the right and libertarians as well, so conservatives and libertarians, um, they're really big on addressing the issue of police unions. And for those who aren't familiar with like, you know, how unions work, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Unions represent the workers um, and they basically, when it comes to collective bargaining with the employer, say the, the, the head of police, they basically advocate for certain benefits for their workers, their police officers, anyone who signs on to the union. What you're seeing right now, um, and this is kind of how the process has been abused, and this is just about unions in general. If you have a, an employee who's constantly messing up, they're not doing a great job, the employer should be able to fire that individual. But here's where some unions come into play. For some of them, the unions fight for that employee to keep their job. And sometimes they say, get them reassigned to another position. Um, sometimes they get, you know, punishment reduced to a more lenient punishment or a, a less harsh punishment, certain different things. But the, ultimately at the end of the day, you're, you're ensuring that that employee remains at the particular job. What we're seeing with police unions is that a lot of police officers who have had complaints filed against them have had harsh citations they're remaining on the job and you know they're keeping their pay they're you know sucking money from the taxpayers um, to essentially just be bad at their jobs and what ends up happening is if we address police unions or you you make if you say like disband police unions or make them illegal somehow Ultimately, you might be setting a new precedent in which other, say, public sector unions, um, you say whether it be a teacher's union or a government employee's union, um, they might be next. And so I'm, I don't know. I, I know that there are plenty of um, liberal critics of police officers who want to address the loopholes that currently exist with police unions. But that's like it's balancing it's a balancing act here because liberals or people on the left of of center um overall um support unions because it's supporting workers um who are not making as much money as say their bosses it's very it's it's a focus on the working class and it's just it's a it's a weird dynamic that we're entering here I'm seeing it talked about in some circles, but not on a mainstream level. The mainstream level is talking about defunding the police. And that's kind of, that's like a, it's a motto. It's a slogan that you can fit on a, a you know, on a bumper sticker and just say, Hey, I'm all for defunding the police. Okay. Well, what the hell does that mean? Like, are you going to have a society where there's no police? Are you going to have a society where say people are going to take the law into their own hands, which by the way, in the case of Ahmaud Arbery, that's exactly what um, the McMichaels were accused of. I mean, like they essentially took the law into their own hands rather than calling police and hunted down Ahmaud Arbery because he was a black man in uh, what was, I guess, considered a, a white or affluent neighborhood just snooping around on construction sites. Um, so those oh. are like the two realities there. I don't know how we're going to go and approach it, but it sounds like uh there are some critics of the police who might be a little bit misguided on this that thinking that you know defunding the police is just automatically gonna uh it's a it's a a giant blanket that's gonna fix the problem you know uh what you said about police unions actually reminds me of a kai Gurley uh who was shot literally walking out of his building uh in brooklyn i believe uh, a officer who was a Asian American officer shot a Kai Gurley in the chest. Um, he was walking out with his girlfriend. They were going on their anniversary date. 
and had no, you know, no complaints or anything. They were just kind of patrolling the projects. And again, if you are like, let's be for real. And, and, and I just want to say this to anybody who's thinking about going into law enforcement or anything. There are certain jobs you're just not built for. If you are so scared to go into the projects that you got your gun drawn for no reason and you're walking around or you're, you're always scared or you're like Officer Yanez who murdered Philando Castillo because you're so scared. If you're that kind of scary guy, in the words of, of Rick Ross, you know, you're not a G, keep it one with yourself. You know what I mean? Like, just understand, you're not like, I'm not going to be an MMA fighter because I don't like getting punched in the face. Right. Like, not you got to so stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. You know what I mean? If you're not built for that kind of stuff, stay in your lane. Uh, and this guy shot a Kai Gurley in the chest, but he didn't call 911. He didn't call for help. When he, you know, when he realized he had shot someone, he called his union rep. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which actually is, is, shows you the role that unions play, uh, particularly in New York City, but in other places. And, and you know, uh, I, I think the other, I just want to pick the on the Akai Gurley case, which is, um, I think that was, a, what, 2016 or something like that. Um, the interesting aspect about that whole story was that you had the Asian American community in New York kind of expressing support for this particular officer who, who killed Akai Gurley, basically demanding that he be treated like a white police officer, which is amazing if you think about it, because, like, if you don't think that, like, uh, white privilege if you think that white privilege is a myth just look at that particular protest and you know that whole that holy shit that is real it exists and people would trade places in a heartbeat with anyone who's white to get that kind of treatment real talk that's a perfect example totally gonna put that on twitter <laughs>